And Tony, when Tony from the Hurries told me that you're having this event today, um, I'm up here anyway, uh, doing gigs and watching my football team Brighton up having away at Barnsley this afternoon. Um, and I thought I'd just come and show a little bit of solidarity. I did gigs during the strike. Um, as we did, I did a, 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 what we could. And uh, you know, all of us from different social backgrounds, different parts of the country, we support you to the hill. I know you know that. Um, and I just wanted to come. I went, I'm going to do a couple of poems and a couple of songs. And I'm going to start off with a poem that, that I wrote for Bob Crow. Now, this poem I was asked to write by the BBC for the BBC obituary program, BB, sorry, Radio 4 obituary program. Um, which is called The Last Word. So they asked me to write a poem for Bob Crow. I wrote the poem and they refused to put it out on air. And instead they had an interview with some Evening Standard journalist. But this is for Bob. There was a man who held his ground, fought every inch and won the day. His legacy, his members lot, good work conditions, decent pay. By Tories and their tabloid dupes, and those who seek more than their share, just like Millwall, his favourite team. He wasn't liked and didn't care. But those who worked in transport knew their leader stood right by their side. No management could lay him low. They wore their union badge with pride. He spoke for passengers as well. Safety, not profit, always first. Opposing fatal funding cuts. Paddington, Potter's Bar, the worst. Bob Crow. A boxer's grandson he, led with a left and packed a punch. The Tories knew who'd take them on. No smarmy smile, no cosy lunch. We need more like him, that's for sure. Up front and honest to the last. He bargained hard and kept his word. A union leader unsurpassed. As zero hours contracts grow and bosses offer Hobson's choice, let us not mourn but organise, get off our knees and find our voice. This man stood hard for workers' rights, a fair wage, a safe, steady job. So you join a union and stand firm. That's the best way to honour Bob. Cheers. And I'm going to do one more. On the day of Thatcher's funeral, I was performing for Durham Miners Association at, 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 at the Easington Colliery Club. And uh, obviously they were having a, uh, in London they were having a funeral and we were having a party. And uh, I, wrote, I wrote this poem especially for them and I've been doing it ever since. And it's about the epic battle between Satan and Thatcher for control of hell. And it goes like this. The furnaces were roaring with a foul and sulfurous smell. The damned were being tortured, just another day in hell. The air was thick with anguished screams and soul-destroying moans, when above the dreadful clamour rose some shrill suburban tones. So messy, and so smelly, and so awfully, awfully hot, and all you do is torture, that puts nothing in the pot. I'll close down your little furnaces, your unproductive ways, and build a brand new call centre, a purgatory that pays. The devil dropped his pitchfork on pawn his coat and hat. I don't mind facing Jesus, but I can't compete with that. But the damned and all the goblins begged him, Lucifer, don't go, stay and help us in our fight. Better the devil than we know. So they voted him shop steward, and they had a demonstration while Thatcher moaned and tutted in mad, impotent frustration. Then they made some great big banners with huge letters, Coal not dole, not one single furnace closure. Go to heaven, Tory troll. Now, Thomas de Torquemada held a centuries-old position as editor of Hell's newspaper, the Daily Inquisition. And Thatcher said to Thomas, I need some press support. You always do my bidding. Here's some text for your report. But Thomas said, can't help you, because Satan, he's my mate. You know, I serve him faithfully since 1498. So she yelled upstairs to Murdoch, Rupert, time for you to die. I need you down here urgently. But there was no reply. Then the devil came in glory, Brian Clough at his right hand, and in tones to shatter marble thundered, Margaret, you are banned. Hell's a worker-run collective, self-sufficient, tightly knit. We don't need your poxy meddling. I condemn you to that pit. But first, I'll reunite you with the one you love the most. He was hiding in the coal hole. He was dressed up as a ghost. 
said he didn't want to see you. Said to please keep him away. But you're here now, aren't you, Dennis? Bid your lady wife good day. That's they were taken to the lift shaft and soon they were gone from sight and heading to an awful place of pain and endless night. And you're not going to believe this for such awful rotten luck, but halfway down the endless pit, the what? Thatcher's lift got stuck. So fight for social justice <laughs> and build a better world and bury her foul legacy with red banners unfurled and heed the final message of this cautionary verse or you could end up like Dennis. I can think of nothing worse. Cheers. Right, here's a song for you.